How can providers best help patients manage their symptoms of either flu, allergies, or COVID? And so, yes, so I'll, I'll focus on um, sort of the, the allergies and asthma aspect of it because we want to make sure those are controlled. So we know that according to the NIH um, guidelines, um, the NHLBI, um, uh, with persistent asthma, um, you know, the majority of asthma is allergic about some studies say, say up to 90% in children and up to 60% in adults. And because of that, you want to um, be able to identify their triggers and uh, you know, testing is recommended, whether it's skin testing or blood testing. And in addition to the clinical history to, to help identify those triggers, because really the treatment would be twofold. You want to be able to um, and remediate the environment and then place patients on the appropriate uh, medications. And if you put them on the, uh, if you're able to control the controllables in the environment, then you may decrease their medication use or, or perhaps they may not be able, they may not need to um, use medications if allergy is the primary driver and they can get rid of that um, sort of allergic uh, trigger. And so my tips would be number one, identify the trigger and counsel patients to minimize their exposure. And it's really simple, low cost interventions. You know, um, don't go outside when the pollens are high. Um, and that would be really early in the morning, um, sort of you can think around sunrise, um, like five to 9 a.m. And then you go also think about when the sun is setting in the evening time. And then really simple things like closing your windows, whether you're um, you know, in your home or whether you're in your car because you don't want that pollen to seep in. And then um, doing things like showering because people don't realize that the pollens are sticky and then they travel with you indoors and can still um, trigger symptoms. And then when it comes to sort of indoor allergens, for example, dust mite, you know, we have the dust mite uh, proof covers for the bedding. You want to wash your sheets frequently. Um, you want to vacuum your carpet uh, regularly. All those environmental mitigation strategies are really important once you identify the allergens um, and tailor those uh, strategies uh, towards uh, what the patient is specifically allergic to. And then we also want to um, remind ourselves of the rule of two, um, reminding ourselves as healthcare providers but also empowering the patients with the information. So the rule of two is if you have asthma symptom days, uh, two times or more daytime symptoms in a week, and in one week, or two or more nighttime symptoms in a whole month, that suggests that your asthma is not well controlled. So again, those patients, we need to be in contact with them and uh, figuring out, you know, what's going on. Um, is it, you know, medication adherence or do we need to, you know, uh, uh, step up the therapy, adjust the therapy? Um, and then also empowering uh, patients. Number three, I would say is empowering patients with asthma action plans because they really need to be able to uh, understand how to control their disease, understand the rule of twos. And, and, and many of my patients can handle going up or down on uh, their inhaler based on their symptoms as long as it's written out in their asthma action plan. And then we also want to make sure that their medications are up to date. So I like to tell them to look at that expiration date for um, their inhalers. And then, um, and, and so that would be that tip number four, checking the medications and the expiration date. And then number five, which I mentioned is you know, reinforcing those infection control um, measures, you know, as public health, um, uh, as uh, healthcare providers, and uh, and uh, part of our public health measures, we're all familiar with, and and and, and patients have heard it uh, time and time again. But again, they're experiencing this COVID fatigue, and they want the pandemic to be over with. But then, as healthcare providers, we have to continue to sort of drill in that message that it's it's not over, especially as the fall comes and we go in uh, go indoors. Um, you know, they need to hear it from uh, their healthcare provider who knows them. So we have to continue to you know talk to them about you know wearing a mask, uh, social distancing, washing their hands frequent, frequently, washing those touch surfaces frequently and um, trying to avoid those large gatherings and really adhering to those 
local public health um, guidelines that are established in, uh, in, in your area. And I think that, that will, those tips will really help our, our patients.